All right, today I'm going to be doing a full breakdown of the Palpatine Blue Control, a deck that I think is a premier control deck in the current metagame of Star Wars Unlimited. I'm going to do a pretty thorough breakdown right now. So, first things first, why are we playing Palpatine? So, Blue Control, or Blue Green Control in this case, has proven that it can really stack up well against uh, Boba Fett. And Boba Fett is maybe one of the strongest, if not the strongest, decks present right now in the early metagame. So it's something that we have to target no matter what we're doing, unless we're going to be playing Boba Fett ourselves. The other thing is, these blue control decks now are kind of in an arms race amongst themselves to see which one can beat the other. Now I think Emperor Palpatine being this massive 8 cost leader that uh, has an incredible enter the play effect by stealing a unit and also has a built in card advantage engine stacks up really well in these control mirrors. So that's kind of why we're gravitating towards him. Now having said that what we're gaining in equity against these other control decks we are losing in equity against the hard aggro decks like Sabine. This deck is not as good as, say, Aiden uh, against Sabine. Uh, her built-in healing, her coming out early, are both much more helpful and stabilizing than this giant leader whose ability is not that impactful early on. So these are a few things you consider when you decide to kind of queue up with a deck like this. What are you targeting? So here's the list. Uh, you can see here we've opted for Capital City, a 30 health blue base instead of Security Complex. The shield, although is powerful, it's more of a value engine for most decks that use it. It's trying to enable a two for one trade over the course of a game with one of your units. Uh, in this case, there's only a couple targets that are particularly strong with it, like our Sentinels. But um, we don't really need value in this deck. We've got value built, built into our leader, built into some of our end game units. We just need to survive a little longer. And Security Complex is probably one of the weaker bases when it comes to like actually making you survive. It's great for generating card advantage, not so much in uh, living longer. All right, so let's uh, break this down bit by bit. First, we got our official package. Now this is really important because of Emperor's Royal Guard. Emperor's Royal Guard being a 3-5 Sentinel in a Palpatine deck specifically, is enormous and it is one of our high priorities to enable this five is a very powerful breakpoint in this game for power uh kind of gets doesn't get the job done against sabine for instance they have k2 and they have echo base defender which can both come in knock it out against boba they got boss they got the boba leader okay four is not enough five stops a lot of that from happening forces double actions often to get through the sentinel buys you way more time so we need to enable it and these are the officials we're playing three regional governors two piets three Laurens. uh regional governor later i'm going to discuss this much more in detail so we're just going to leave it at that for now piets not great but in the late game uh we've got dooku's and reinforcement walkers that work with it reinforcement walkers specifically against like Sabine aggro or even Boba Fett who's trying to like push more damage early if you get an ambush and heal six it's very hard for them to ever come back from that and your Lauren again built in healing he's a two three so his power is a little stronger than these guys makes him a little brawl a little better because we're playing so many of these dinky officials though we're playing the full set of three snowtrooper lieutenants to turn them into actual units, right? We need to be able to do three damage a lot of the time to kill things like Battlefield Marine, Echo Base Defender, Sabine Unit, um, against other uh, decks sometimes it, it comes up, but primarily against aggressive decks. And yeah, we, we, we need them to be units. We can't just have these guys be one fours, guys and girls just be one fours all game. So we're playing the full set of lieutenants. They're really good with Vader, the, the unit later. So that's kind of what we got there. Removal, pretty standard for a blue-green control deck. You play takedowns, you play power to the dark side, you play some vanquishes sometimes. Uh, barrage is obviously included. And then we've opted for a couple making openings in the main deck. Again, this is a good card against Boba Fett. It kills their shielded units. It's a good card against Sabine, although not fantastic. The two, uh, the minus two, minus two doesn't usually kill anything outright. 
But you got some healing. And then we got Death Trooper. Again, you're never leaving home without three of these in a blue villain deck. Uh, they're really powerful. They're another really good Vader pull later in the game. Uh, so that's kind of what we got for controlling our, our board. And then we got our ramp and our finishers. We're playing the full set of three super laser techs and three resupply. Super laser tech's the best card in this deck, easily. Like the fact that you can throw this guy with Palpatine's ability to ramp on the same turn and draw a card, as well as ping some, like deal a damage, which means Palpatine can now steal what you're throwing at. More on this later. Uh, very good. Resupply, good in most matchups, gets cut against Sabine. Um, and then we've got two Dukus, three Vaders, two Reinforcement Walkers. Now you notice I'm not going all the way up to like the nines and tens. I'm not playing Avengers in this deck. I'm not playing Devastators in this deck or Relentless. I think this is enough. Palpatine is also a bomb, right? He is an eight. He's a four ten. He steals a unit. That kind of substitutes a little bit for our late game value. We will bring in some of these bigger ships, the capital ships in uh, post board games for like mirrors. But I think this is mostly enough to get you through what we're targeting. And we don't want to overload on giant stuff because that's going to further make our Sabine matchup more difficult. We're going to have more air in our deck in that matchup. And even though we're pretty unfavored in that matchup, we need to be able to win it sometimes if we're going to register a deck like this in a larger event. Other stuff. All right. Inferno 4, very good two drop. Uh, we're down to two here. They're unique. We don't fight that much in space in this deck, to be honest. Uh, that's where we like to target most of our removal. Um, we do have a couple system patrol crafts to add some space sentinels. We're playing Baze Malbus in this deck, which I've been pretty impressed with in a couple matchups. Again, five health sentinel is a break point. It's important that we don't let Boba Fett go absolutely crazy on its flip turn. Uh, and having five health to force double attacks into your Sentinel is important. Now he doesn't always have Sentinel, but we don't take that many actions in our deck usually, and we can always claim initiative when we're done uh, with our stuff and like kind of turn on his Sentinel during the turn. I've opted, also opted for one of Cheeky Traitorous. It's the only five like proactive five cost card we play. Like the others are Barrage. We're not playing much five cost. Um, which also means that our ramp, like we don't have to ramp on turn two that much. There's not nothing we're specifically trying to play on turn three that costs five. Traders can be cheeky. If you have it early in your hand, you can, there's some gaming you can do with it. I'll talk about that a little later, but such as like stealing a super laser tech. Um, it's actually like really solid late game to just like have access to like another removal card for a space unit, especially something that's shielded like a seventh fleet defender or a millennium Falcon that comes in. All right, sideboarding. It's my current sideboard. Now, I thoroughly encourage anyone to make this their own, build a sideboard that they think will help target what they're seeing more of. Since I've opted for a much more conservative control deck in game one that didn't have that much top end, I've added quite a bit in this sideboard specifically for control mirrors. Uh, the two Devastators and two Relentless, they're basically only coming in in Mirrors. Um, the Reinforcement Walker, actually, we bring that in against Sabine with make an opening in the three Entrenches. Now, Entrench has actually been pretty good here. We're pl its prim primary use is to put it on one of our Sentinels, the, the Royal Guards or the Bays, and it also helps uh, our Barrages. Now, this deck is not a very strong early game overwhelming Barrage deck. We don't have that many powerful units. Like, three is basically the most we get from like the Royal Guard and our Death Trooper. So a five damage barrage is usually kind of what we're going for. Entrenched out of the board against Sabine and against Boba to some extent, but primarily it's for Sabine, right? We want to beef up a Sentinel. We might be able to follow that with a barrage. Um, it's also in like a rare use case, you can use it to like lock up an A-Wing that's in space against them just to stall a little bit, but it's a complete non-combo with power of the dark side. So you need to kind of, it's that's kind of a last resort situation. Um, against Boba Fett, the entrenches are there basically just to put on a fire spray. If entrench is a five heal, like heals you five because they weren't able to attack with fire spray, or maybe heals you 10 because normally it would have gotten in twice, that's fantastic. A lot of blue decks, like hero mid-range blue decks, we're talking like Luke, Chewy, Churret, 
The reason I don't really advocate for playing Entrench there against Bova is because you put an Entrench on their Fire Spray and now they have a 10 damage Overwhelming Barrage possibility. And you are playing, and if you're playing a unit based mid range deck, you, you just get board wiped completely. It demolishes you. So it's not really a strategy there. However, we don't really care. We, we don't really care if they get a 10 damage barrage in this deck. It's like not the end of the world. And our primary plan here is just to survive for our flip. If we can lock up a Palpatine, what we're gonna do, uh, sorry, lock up a Fire Spray, what we're gonna do is probably toss something at it with our Palpatine ability and then steal it with Palpatine and have our own eight attack Fire Spray in play that will represent a board wipe off a of barrage and completely lock up their space. They'll never be able to play their own Fire Spray after that. So that's kind of what we got the entrenches there. Emperor's Legion is another card for control mirrors, um, especially like the ones playing a ton of super laser blasts. Uh, that's probably more like red blue control. Also, reinforcement marker is awesome. Maybe we should play all three in the main deck. All right, some notable omissions. I'm not playing the board wipe. It's weird, right? It's a control deck. Maybe I should be playing the board wipe, but decided not to. I think Palpatine kind of is our board wipe, right? He's stealing a thing. He comes into play. He's giant. Uh, remember, like Palpatine also can kind of pseudo attack for five when he comes into play, so he can kill bigger things by like sacking something. Um, yeah, I, I think Super Laser Blast is a consideration, as is Avenger. I have Relentlesses in the sideboard. That's kind of a nod towards these like stally red blue control decks, which I think have a harder time dealing with a Relentless than they do with Avenger because they play a lot of single target removal. But, um, Avengers good too, and it's probably better against like blue green mirrors where everyone's bringing in devastators and relentless just kind of gets nugged by that. At least Avenger did something when it came into play. Viper probe, if you're looking to get even more lean, and it probably could help a little bit in the Sabine matchup to just have a three power two drop is a consideration. Consortium Star Viper, I don't think is actually good unless you're playing Energy Conversion Lab, the rare green base. I think without Ambush, this card is kind of nothing. Um, I wouldn't really recommend playing it. Uh, Escort Skiff and Cargo Juggernaut, I think are both considerations if you tweak your deck a little bit to be a little heavier in the green or heavier in the blue. Uh, I think my deck's a little too split down the middle to make these reliable triggers, but they're pretty good cards and they warrant some discussion. All right, now a little bit of strategy. Flipping Palpatine. So we, it's massive, right? We're stealing a unit, but we need to make this turn count for us to kind of steal games. So part of that is element of surprise. Having these ramp cards, the turn where we have seven resources in hand means we can flip him kind of without the our opponent being ready for it, right? Super laser tech, primarily is incredible with that because not only is it ramping you to the eight you're also you can also toss it at something and deal one damage to it thus also enabling the palpatine the other things you want to consider here is just setting up the turn that you're going to get to eight right you need something damaged it's really good to also have priority the turn you like if you're gonna just get to eight in the natural way by resourcing at the start of your turn having priority is great right you're gonna steal something before it gets to attack you so you'll have like an extra readied unit that also didn't deal damage to you so you want to try to game and you want to think about this the turn the six resource turn the seven resource turn how can i get something damaged and also maintain priority and it's also a game your opponent's gonna have to play right they, they might have to claim early like they, they might have plays to make but because you're representing a steal on an important unit, they might just have to like skip part of their turn to claim so that they get an action out of that unit before you uh, steal it, which is also really powerful, right? Like if they had four resources up and instead of like deploying a four drop, they have to protect a unit that you're gonna steal from them, it's done its job. But uh, yeah, I think having a ramp card ready to go on the seven resource turn is really strong. There's also like things like Vader, the turn before, where if he draws like a Death Trooper, you can get a ping. It's also good to play expensive cards the turn before because it means you're going to take less actions, more likely to maintain priority going into the flip turn. Once he flips, you get a steal, you get a 410, right? Like, I mean, nothing really does 10. 
Devastator does 10, but it's hard to kill him. Uh, he can attack for five, like I said, right? He does the four, you can toss something. So often if, you, if there are ground units that have five health, they're not really your vanquish targets, right? He can kill them. You save your vanquishes for the fire sprays or for the big ships, like the home one. Like you need to be ready to trade with your units on the ground. This is a very ground focused deck. Try to keep the removal at hand for the things you can't answer in space. All right, <clears throat> regional governor. So there's a lot going on with this card. It's not always great, but because we're playing it to enable our 3-5 Sentinel, we need to know what we're doing with it. And it can be quite powerful if we do it right. So we'll just go through a little bit of scenarios, one against Sabine, one against Boba, and then just think about what it is we're trying to do. So against Sabine, one of our trickiest issues to deal with is a wing leader going on to Sabine, the unit, right? If anything ever gets past five health, it's really hard for us to kill it because our takedowns don't work anymore. It also kind of bricks our power of the dark side, right? Because now they've basically have fodder to toss to it. It's usually my number one target early in the game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Occasionally, you might want to go A-wing uh, early in the game just to force them into the ground. Fleet Lieutenant's another card that pushes a lot of damage. Uh, but between these early, it's almost always wing leader. Uh, later in the game, we want to target their um, their reach, their burn, right? The, the stuff that they can deal damage to you without have it having to attack you. So that's things like K2, which even if it never attacks, can deal three to you and four cause. Um, often there's games where our only out really is like we've is to block for a cause, right? We've stabilized the board. We unfortunately don't have a recurring healing effect. That's where reinforcement walker would come in. And we're at four life, three life, something like that. We can kill them in two turns, but if they draw four cause, we lose. So regional governor is kind of our app there. Um, again, it's a one four. With uh, the, our lieutenants, it can kill things like Balfour Marine and Sabine unit. And then our usual line is just regional governor into our 3-5 Sentinel uh, and have the Sentinel kind of try to delay as much as possible. Against Boba Fett, maybe we target ramp. Uh, I think that's a little guessy. It, it's like a 50-50. I think usually the answer is just to name Super Laser Tech because it's the better card. But you can... In some situations, especially if you have traders in your hand and your own resupply, you can do something like name resupply. Then you're both playing your ramp cards on turn two, right? You play resupply, they play super laser tech. If you have initiative, you can traders their super laser tech. Um, that's a case where that might work. I'm usually more inclined to just name Bosk early on because I think that, in, that enables their largest Boba flip turns. He also, you know, kills regional governor, which matters. Uh, but later in the game, we we want to hit the the big stuff, right? Fire spray, Darth Vader. You know, there's other cards you can name. Every situation is unique. I think the way you need to look at this card is not so much about guessing what's in your opponent's hand. Just assume they have it all, and then pick the one that you think would bother you the most in any given time. That's kind of what you do with this. Um, you're not trying to like be omniscient. You're just trying to cover your base from something that you think would be problematic in the moment. All right, a little bit of this. Oh, we talked so much about Sabine and Bo, but there's not much left to say. We are unfavored against Sabine, but our strategy is Sentinels into Sentinels into stall, right? Like as much as if we can delay enough damage early on with our Sentinels and enable a decent barrage, we can stabilize through our mid game, right? Through our six, seven, eight resource, right? We usually want to win with a reinforcement walker. That's often what kind of locks the game up. I know it's crazy to think an eight drop is what's locking the game up, but we do have 30 health. We got a bunch of sentinels. We got a bunch of removal. We just need to try to manage breakpoints in this, especially with things like wing leader and metal ceremony. You always need to be aware of where that may trigger a breakpoint. Um, you might sometimes have to even like toss a unit at something like a Sabine to deal one damage to it because you suspect they might metal ceremony that turn. And if you leave it at six, your takedown no longer kills it and you've given them way too much time to get more damage through. 
it's okay to ex like some units are just expendable and it's tough like th this is not easy but it's way better than i used to think it was especially with the configuration i've built it is very much built to not insta lose to sabine right we're not like you can look at the list it's got a lot of early game interaction a lot of early game units and not even that much of a top end it's about as close as I can make this matchup without, you know, adding even more two drops and like then starting to really lose equity in the late game. Against Bobo, we're favored, frankly. Uh, the one thing you need to really try to mitigate is the absolutely enormous Boba flip turn that they could do. If they can get a five drop and a Boba and a three drop unit into play, follow that up with a fire spray while you're still kind of reeling from that turn, you're going to have problems. A lot of what you can do to mitigate that is just not have units early on that they can free kill. That's again, where the Sentinels come in, right? Those are not free kills because they actually have to work to get through them, uh, usually with either multiple attacks or a waylay. But if they waylay, they didn't play another unit. That's decent. And then we can, you know, redeploy the Sentinels um, as long as we have an official. They're important. All right, control mirrors. Let's talk first about like Krennic and Iden Green, which are like what I would say is like the little brother of the deck we're playing. You should be favored. Um, they're playing a 2 7 with Restore 2 and a 4 4 with a Shield. You're playing a 4 10 with a Guilt and Card Draw engine that also steals their best unit. Ours is better. Um, they can't really do anything about that. So they're going to try to win usually by maybe teching more in the main deck for this like m these decks will probably have avengers in their main deck uh maybe even devastators like we're not playing those and that's kind of where we might lose some equity in those mirrors we're going to have them post board but in the f in the main matchup uh that's kind of how we would lose um but i i still think we're pretty heavily favored just because we're drawing more cards and our leader is massively more impactful uh, we can talk a little bit about like the red version of these control decks. They're much more single target removal based. They play wet less units. They can stall more. Uh, I've even seen some vigilance in the decks sometimes to like just go to decking. So uh, I think that's going to be challenging for a blue green villain deck to kind of deal with because we just can't kill quickly enough to to like force their hand early on and then the like we'll just trade answers like our hand will also be a bunch of removal and answers but they're not playing anything that cares really so it's difficult we've got some stuff post board right bigger ships emperor's legion for like a for like anti super laser blast tech we got some relentless which although not great against green because of devastator doesn't have really a direct answer they, they usually will just have to burn two cards to get rid of it if they can so that's uh kind of the thing there uh as for vader vader's not so much a control deck as just like a, a ramp deck i know we're, we're all playing the same ramp cards but vader is much more concerned about just like slaughtering you with his leader uh it could be tricky again because some of our answers just don't line up well against him but the matchup should be much better than like a Krennic or Iden green against Vader because again our leader matters and the issue those decks had is against Vader is their leader is not that impactful us being able to you know like steal a Darth Vader steal a seventh sister if they're playing it steal a ruthless Raider okay major game swings possible there um so keep that in mind all right so with that, I got the list here. There's going to be a, a link to the list with the sideboard in the description. I'd really appreciate it. A uh, like and subscribe to the channel. It uh, means a lot to me if uh, I get those. Uh, if you have any questions, any different ways you've been building Palpatine, please let me know. Uh, love to discuss it. Uh, just looking forward to putting out more content, getting some more guides and strategy stuff out there. And yeah. That's going to be a wrap. Thanks for watching.